So many photography fans have dreamed of taking their favorite classic film camera and putting some sort of sensor into the back and turning it into a digital camera. Now, there have been Kickstarters that have promised this, there's been some April Fool's jokes, but nothing has really panned out. Um, but I'm actually here today to tell you that that dream is reality, and it's actually existed for some time. In fact, I'm filming this clip on a large format camera. The Hasselblad digital back I have is the 907X 50 CFV. If you have a collection of vintage cameras, you might find that adding a digital back, whether this model or some other, will allow you to use your collection in new and interesting ways. With the rising cost of film, you actually might find that it's cheaper long term, especially if you're able to buy one of these backs used. You might also benefit from sliding backs that allow you to stitch multiple images together. Overall, it's just a lot of fun. These backs are nothing new. They were actually available in the early 90s, but they were bulky and had to be tethered to computers and cost $30,000 to $65,000. But now you can get a great older model for $1,000, around $1,000. Or you might go with the latest Hasselblad backs, uh, the 50 CFE like I have, which is well suited for this purpose, or the 100 CFE, which is the newest model, its resolution might be overkill for the older lenses we're talking about here. My back works great on vintage 500 series camera bodies. Motor driven models like this 500 ELX are some of the cheapest models available in the used market, often costing around $300. The latest in the motor driven cameras is the 555 ELD, which had electrical contacts on the back, which allowed it to communicate with digital backs. Essentially, the back can fire the camera, or the camera will only fire when the back is ready to shoot. Here's my capture group camera. I've got a separate video on this. Super cool way to use Nikon lenses. An old Linhoff Tech 4 series. Super cheap camera. Here's my uh, Linhoff Tech 70 with the top viewfinder removed. This is a Linhoff Technica V camera, the 6x9 version. This is uh, my 4x5 camera with a sliding back attached. You can see how this back can be used to stitch multiple images together. And here's my very large and beautiful Linhoff Studio camera. Too big to use in the field. Really would need a wide angle bellow to be super effective with this back, but fun to use. Let's talk setup, and with my 50 CFE, this is super easy. I go into the camera body menu and I select my camera or flash sync if I'm using a cable. It either connects to this mechanical sensor if you're using a Hasselblad body, or a flash sync cable to know when the shutter has been fired. So I have a number of different adapters to mount this back to my cameras. This is a sliding version that allows you to stitch images. It can go in horizontal or vertical mode. And here's one that's fixed and doesn't have that stitching mechanism. But note the difference in thickness here, which affects your ability to use wide lenses. This next one is super cool. It's for four x five cameras. I think it was made by Mamiya. Um, Essentially, it lets you use your sensor at the same film plane as you would with, uh, with your film, which allows you to share the same infinity stops. This is a sliding 4x5 adapter, similar to the last one we saw, but bigger. Clicks in place nicely. Now here's a sliding back, which allows me to compose on ground glass and then use my digital sensor. It actually has a Mamiya plate installed, which isn't correct. I did this. Let's talk lenses. So you can find digital versions of lenses like this 80 millimeter. Here's another one by Sinar. This is a 55 millimeter lens, one of my favorite, super high resolution compared to the older um, lenses that are available. You might just use your a six by nine lens that you already have, like this beautiful 80 millimeter, or, you know, any large format lens will work. This is sort of a budget lens that I have that honestly isn't great. So with this little pack, I can switch from digital to film. 
I put my plate on the sensor. I've got my ground glass back loaded with one uh, film holder where I can preview my images. I have a second film holder so I can take up to four exposures. Each takes two, two-sided, and then my loop. This Linehoff Tech 70 is a great budget camera option that can be used handheld on a tripod. It has a drop bed, a straight bed, tons of camera movements as we can see here. I'm going converting it to a straight bed here. You can see the lens can be moved in all kinds of directions. The back has movements that can lock in place too. It has a nice range finder, actually three-sided range finder for using with three different lenses that are set. You can see how it functions here. This is a home cut range finder cam that pairs with my favorite lenses. So here we're selecting the viewfinder frames. I like the 80 millimeter version of the camera. This is how you would check. You would look for this number. This is the viewfinder rangefinder combo. You've got the rangefinder in the middle. You've got outlines for the different lenses and you have a tilt indicator on the top. The last great feature of this camera is a built-in light meter that doesn't need any batteries. Here you just match the dial to the light indicator to know the right shutter speed aperture combo. For this first photo shoot, we're using my back with a modern digital lens, my oldest Linhoff at Fort Washington in Maryland. Here, please note the chromatic aberration at the edges of this image, the red sort of banding on the sides. This is another three shot image like the previous one that shows this effect. And the rest of these images are just single exposures where I'm not stitching images together. They're sharp to the edges. As we look at these photos, I wanted to note two things. We're using a modern Sinar 55 digital lens, so you'll see excellent quality. And on that chromatic aberration we saw in the stitched images, that occurs when light hits the sensor at extreme angles. Same camera body, but this time I'm using a 65 millimeter film lens, um, really soft in the corners. And we can compare this to the 55 millimeter Sinar digital lens in the previous photos. Here's a view of Georgetown looking from Roosevelt Island in Virginia. We're going to take a three shot stitched image here. Note the chromatic aberration in the corners, that purpleness. Also note the softness of the corners with this film lens. It doesn't quite cover this stitched image. And then the rest of these images are single shot examples so you'll see they're much sharper in the corners. This setup's okay with a moving subject like my daughter. I can preset the focus, you know, to the distance she roughly is, and with this wide lens and the right aperture, everything sort of works out. Last photo, so thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.